Let's be honest, who doesn't love a shiny new gadget? But with tech trends popping up faster than you can say the word upgrade, it's easy to get caught up in this hype. Today, we're cutting through the noise and making our heart look at some of the most overhyped tech out there. Foldable devices, 8K TVs, VR headsets, are they game changers or are they just expensive toys? Stick around and by the end of this video, you know exactly which tech is worth your time and which will stay on the shelf. And so without taking much of your time, yo guys, let's get started. First up, let's talk about the foldable smartphones. These gadgets are like the sweet army knives of the mobile world. A phone when you need it and a tablet when you want it. Sounds pretty cool, right? But before you rush out and buy one of these devices, let's break this down. On the plus side, you get a larger screen for some of these devices for work and play, all in one device and still kind of fits in your pocket. It's like carrying a mini tablet anywhere you go. But here's the catch, I mean it's a big catch. These devices are still in their awkward teenage years. They are often fragile with delicate folding mechanisms here in the center and they give you this crease when you fold these devices. In the long run, these devices might not stand up to the wear and tear. And let's not even talk about the price tag for these devices. We are talking about serious cash here. So ask yourself, is that extra display real estate worth double the price and the constant anxiety about breaking this shiny new toy? For most of us, a solid big screen smartphone might still be the smarter choice, but hey, if you're a tech pioneer with deep pockets, go ahead and flex that futuristic smartphone and just try not to fold it too much. Next up, let's talk about 8K TVs. These behemoth promise picture quality so sharp you can practically see a flea on a lion's back from your couch. Sounds amazing, right? But hold up, there are a few things you need to know before you max out your credit card on one of these TVs. First off, let's talk about the content. Sure, these TVs can display 8K resolution, but guess what? Most of the stuff out there are just in 4K or even regular full HD. It's like buying a Lamborghini and only being able to drive in a parking lot. Then there's this price difference between the 4K and 8K TVs. We're not talking about some few extra hundred bucks. The jump from 4K to 8K can be jaw dropping and not in a good way. And here's the kicker. Unless you're sitting incredibly close to these massive displays, your eyes can't tell the difference between a 4K and an 8K television. So unless you're a serious cinephile with cash to burn, a quality 4K television will probably blow your mind just fine. Save that extra cash for some awesome sound bars or, you know, maybe a year's worth of Netflix subscription. All right, gamers, this one is for you. Virtual reality headsets, they promise to transport us into digital worlds like never before battling dragons, exploring alien planets, all from the comfort of your living rooms. Sounds like a dream come true, right? Well, let's take a closer look at these things. On the plus side, VR headsets offer some truly mind-blowing experiences. You know, it's immersive in a way that traditional gaming just can't match. But, it's a big but. There are some hurdles to consider here. First off, the cost of these devices. A high-end VR setup can set you back as much as a gaming PC, and that's before you even buy the games to play on these things. And speaking of games, the virtual reality library, while it's still growing, is still limited compared to traditional gaming. And let's not forget the physical aspect. VR headsets can cause you motion sickness and fatigue, especially during longer sessions. So, while VR headsets are undoubtedly cool, for most gamers, a comfy chair, a good monitor, and a traditional setup are still the best way to go. But hey, if you've got space and the budget for these devices, and you have an iron stomach, VR headsets can be an awesome addition to your gaming arsenal. Just remember, you're not actually jumping off a cliff. So try to avoid any unnecessary swan dives in your living room so you don't break anything. <laughs> oh God. Next on my list, smart glasses. These futuristic glasses promise to overlay digital information right onto your field of vision. You know, notifications, directions, and even augmented reality games, all without taking your phone out of your pocket. It's like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. But are we ready for this cyberpunk future? Let's break it down. The potential here is undeniably cool. Imagine getting your turn-by-turn -turn directions from your maps literally in front of your eyes, or seeing a restaurant's menu and reviews just by looking at it. But there are some pretty significant drawbacks for these things. First up, the design here. Let's be honest, some smart glasses still look pretty clunky. Unless you're going for this cyborg chick look, they are not exactly fashion forward. 
then there is this privacy concern. These glasses essentially have cameras pointed wherever you're looking. And how comfortable are you with that? I mean, how comfortable are people around you having to look at them with a camera? And here's the kicker. For all their fancy features, smart glasses still can do a lot of things your smartphones would do. So you're essentially carrying an extra device that does less than the one in your pocket. For now, your trusty smartphone does it all without making you look like you just stepped off the set of a low-budget sci-fi film. But who knows? Maybe in a few years, we'll all be rocking these stylish smart specs or smart glasses. All right, before we jump into the next gadget goodness, let me make you an offer you can't refuse. Hit that subscribe button now and I guarantee you'll be 27% smarter in your next tech conversation. Okay, maybe not exactly 27% smarter, but hey, you at least know these gadgets to avoid. Go on, smash that button as it means a lot to us here. Thank you. Moving on to the smart home trend, the Internet of Things promises a house that obeys your every command. You know, lights that turn on when you enter the room, a fridge that orders milk when you're running low, a thermostat that learns your preferences. Sounds like we're living in the future, right? Well, let's take a closer look at this brave new world of connected devices. On the surface here, IoT devices offer unprecedented convenience. Imagine never having to worry about forgetting to turn off the light or adjust the thermostat. Your home becomes a responsive environment, anticipating your needs. That's pretty sweet, right? But there are some serious conversations or considerations to have here. First off would be security. Every connected device is a potential entry point for hackers. Do you really want someone halfway across the world to be able to mess with your lights in the house or maybe your security camera and then have the ability to watch your every move? Then there's this compatibility headache. Different brands often use different protocols, meaning your smart fridge might not play nice with your smart speakers. And let's be honest here, sometimes these smart devices can be more complicated to use than the dumb counterparts. Have you ever tried turning on a smart light when the Wi-Fi is down? It's like trying to start a car without an engine. So while these smart home devices can genuinely make our lives easier, maybe you shouldn't connect everything to the internet. After all, do you really need a Wi-Fi enabled toaster? Sometimes the old ways are the best way to go. Now let's talk about crypto mining rigs. These powerful computers promise to mint digital gold while you sleep. Sounds great, right? Well, not so fast. First, the setup costs are quite steep. We're talking about high-end graphic cards, powerful processors, and these robust cooling systems. It's a big investment before you even start. Then there's the electricity bill. I mean, these rigs are power hungry. In many places, the cost of electricity outweighs any potential earnings with these devices. But the biggest issue here is profitability is widely unpredictable. And that's because crypto prices fluctuate constantly. And also the mining difficulty increases over time. What's profitable today might be a money pit tomorrow. So unless you're a tech wizard with free electricity, crypto mining is probably best left to the big industrial operations. For the rest of us, if you want to get into crypto, you're likely better off buying from some exchange. So before I continue, it's time for some tech confessions. What's the most overhyped gadget you own right now? Don't worry, this is a judgment-free zone. Let me know in the comment section below. Next up, generative AI. These are AI systems that can create content, maybe art, music, writing, or even code. Pretty mind-blowing stuff, right? Imagine having an AI assistant that can whip up a logo, compose a jingle, or write a first draft for you. But it's not all rosy. The quality can be hit or miss here, and AI still lacks that human touch that drives truly powerful art. Then there's this copyright minefield. If an AI creates something based on existing work, who owns the right here? It's a legal nightmare we're only beginning to navigate. So while generative AI is impressive, I don't expect it to replace human artists anytime soon. I mean, with super nice prompts, you can get amazingly good scripts, but these prompts have to be written and engineered by somebody. Bringing us back to the needed human touch. It's a tool great for ideas or routine tasks, but for the creative emotional touch, humans are still king. Now let's talk about 5G smartphones. They promise lightning fast internet speeds everywhere. Sounds amazing. Well, pump the brakes on this one. First off, 5G coverage is still limited in many areas. You might have it in the major cities, but step into the suburbs and you get only 4G. Then there's this issue of battery drain. 5G chips are power hungry as you'd likely use them to do a lot. So your shiny new phone with 
this 5G technology might need charging more often. And here's a kicker, for most everyday tasks, 4G is plenty fast. Sure, 5G might download a movie faster, but how often do you really need that speed? Unless you live in a 5G hotspot and absolutely need that blazing speed, a good 4G phone will serve you just fine. 5G is the future, no doubt, but that future isn't evenly distributed yet. It's like buying a Ferrari in a city full of speed bombs. Sure, it's fast, but you rarely use the speed or the power of this car. By the way, I made a video where I discussed if it's worth buying a 5G smartphone right now. Check it out here. Now let's talk about these ultra thin laptops. These sleek machines promise laptop power in a tablet-like package. They are incredibly portable and they also look great. But the thing here is that they are trade-offs. To achieve this thin profile, they often use less powerful components. If you're getting into gaming or video editing, these kind of laptops are not the ones for you. Then there's the port situation. Many of these ultra thin laptops have one or two USB-C ports and that welcomes you to a dongle life. And when we talk about being able to upgrade these devices, it's almost impossible because most of these components are soldered directly to the body or the motherboard of these devices. So while these laptops are great for portability, power users might want to bulk up a bit. Sometimes a slightly thicker laptop with more power and ports is worth the extra weight. It's like choosing between a supermodel and a bodybuilder. Sure, one looks great, but the other might be more practical for tasks at hand. Lastly, let's discuss subscription-based software. Remember buying a program once and owning it forever? Those days are fading. Now, it's all about monthly or yearly fees. There are benefits here. You always have the latest versions of the software and new features, security updates. It can make budgeting easier and expensive software more accessible. But there are downsides too. Those monthly costs add up over time, potentially costing more in the long run. And you're essentially renting this software. And when you stop paying, you might even lose access to your own files. Plus, some companies add unnecessary features to justify the subscriptions, complicating the software. So, while subscription models can be great for trying out expensive programs or always having the latest features, do the math for the long-term use. Sometimes, a one-time purchase is still the way to go. It's like choosing between buying a car and perpetually renting one. Sure, renting gives you the latest model, but at what point are you just throwing money away? Before you go, if you found this video even a little bit helpful, tap the like button. It's like giving me a virtual high five. And if you know someone who is about to splurge on the latest gadgets, share this video with them. They will thank you later. Now, I've got another juicy tech breakdown on why spending $1,000 on a smartphone might be a huge mistake. Check it out here. Cool that day.